Welcome to Simply Sewing with Laura. There are so many different tools and notions that we can have to help us with our sewing. And it's also nice to keep all those tools and notions in one area so we know where they're at when we need them. So let's make a little tool case to carry all of these notions and let's do it with just a straight stitch on the sewing machine. Nothing fancy, just a straight stitch. We're going to be able to go forward, we're going to do reverse, a pivot, and a top stitch, all with one simple stitch, the straight stitch. So set your machine up to a straight stitch and let's get started. So today what we're going to do is we're going to make a case to store all of the tools that we need for sewing. And it's going to be a roll-up case so that we roll up all of our tools and they stay in one roll. This case is going to be very easy to make. There's no pattern and you get to customize it to how you want it. The fabric you're going to need for this project is two pieces of fabric and it's going to be 30 inches by 25 inches. The first fabric you can have a lightweight cotton. And that's going to be the inside. The outside it's recommended that you have something a little bit heavier. Something in a medium weight. This is the fabric bolt that you can buy at Walmart and it's a canvas or what they call duck. Having this as a heavier weight fabric is easy to sew with so it's going to be fun and it's also stronger than something lightweight. We're also going to need a little bit of ribbon to tie that roll up together. So the first thing we need to do is cut both pieces of fabric at the same size, 30 inches by 25 inches. If you have a package of universal needles, you can use the 9014, so it's a little bit heavier. You can also use a denim or a jean needle at 100 slash 16. And for the thread, just get an all-purpose thread that's going to match the color of your fabric. And that thread color is going to have to go on the top of the machine and the bobbin. Pin both layers together all the way around the outside with the right sides touching. From here, we're going to cut the fabric on a bit of an angle. This is the longer side, which is the 30 inches. I want to measure down from that corner three inches and put a mark. I want to take that three inch mark and I want to have it go all the way up to the top here on an angle. So that line is going to go on a diagonal. If you only have a tape measure, that's fine. You can just pull that tight and make marks. If you have something long you can use, this is the perfect time for it. So I have my three inch mark and it's going to match up to zero. So I'm going to go from three, draw that diagonal line all the way up to that point. Move those pins just on that one side so that you're not in the way of that line. Now cut off this long thin triangle starting at that zero and I'm going to go all the way down to the three inch mark. So I have this long triangle cut out and I cut both fabrics at the same time. We're going to stitch all the way around this shape but we need to leave a little opening in the center and that's on that side where we had that three inch cut. So just take that fabric, fold it in half and make yourself about a four inch mark and it doesn't have to be exact. We now can stitch around this entire shape. You can use whatever seam allowance you're comfortable sewing with. A seam allowance is the space between where you've stitched and that raw edge. Quilters use a quarter inch seam allowance. Those that follow patterns for sewing use a 5 8 So for this project, we're going to use a 5 8 The tape measures are divided so each inch is divided into eight sections. We have a half, we have a quarter, and we have eights. So if we're counting over, we're going to start at one, and that is the size of the seam allowance. Now if you have a seam guide, chances are that seam guide width is going to be 5 8 The other thing is, is a lot of tape measures are also 5 8 of an inch wide. And just mark 5 8 going along both sides. So the tape measure is going to follow one edge and you're going to be able to mark the other. So this mark here is going to be a pivot mark. We're going to be stitching along on our machine. We're going to be able to stop right there, turn the fabric and continue stitching down. And put this mark in all four corners. 
The stitching along the edge is called a seam, and this space here is a seam allowance. We have the machine set up for a straight stitch. We have that all-purpose or that denim needle on, and the thread has been threaded through, and the bobbin thread has been brought up to the top. On my little red Bernina, I have a little mark that says 5 8 So I'm going to be able to use that guide along my fabric. I'm going to start with that 4 inch mark and always remember to lower that foot. The machine will not sew properly if the foot is not lowered. From there you can put the needle down in the fabric and sew a couple of stitches forward. And you get to sew in reverse. So we are going to be able to push our reverse button. The machine is going to sew backwards. We're still going to follow that 5 8 inch of a seam, but we're only going to sew backwards. And I'm going to be able to sew all the way backwards to my mark. And that is a back stitch. So what that's done is that's going to anchor that fabric so it doesn't come undone. Now I'm going to be able to sew forward all the way along following that edge. As I'm sewing, I want to make sure that I'm not sewing over top of my pins. Remove them as you get to them. And we're going to be able to stitch and stop right there in that point or somewhere very close to it. Once that needle has hit that mark, I'm going to raise my foot and the needle is still in that fabric. And I'm going to be able to turn the fabric I'm still at my 5 8 inch mark, put my foot right back down, and continue sewing right along that edge. And we're going to just keep sewing until we get to the next edge. Keep stitching that 5 8 seam allowance till you get right to this point, and then stop as close as you can with your needle down in that point. Raise the foot and pivot. You're going to do this to all four corners and you're going to sew right up to that four inch mark. So the opening is here and go reverse a little bit and then forward. So you're going to go reverse and then let the machine go forward. And that has made another back stitch which locks those stitches so they don't come apart. From here we're going to raise up that needle, lift up the foot and take out the fabric. We have that opening that we're going to be able to turn this whole thing right side out. But before we do that, we need to trim off some bulk from the corners. When this entire thing is turned right side, those seams are going to be inside like this, which means this corner is going to have a lot of layers and a lot of bulk. And you're going to cut that corner right off. You're going to have less bulk in that corner. So trim a little triangle off of all four of those corners. If you find you've trimmed too close, all you need to do is go back and restitch that corner. Once those corners are trimmed, we can take our hand, put it inside that opening, and pull that entire bag right side out. In order to get those corners out, this is where we need the point turner. I would definitely recommend using a point turner and not the end of the pair of scissors. There's only a couple of threads right there in that corner and the scissors, or something very sharp, can poke right through the fabric. Put that point turner right into that corner and gently work that point out. With those four corners pointed out, we can now press the seams together. When you press, you have to make sure that your seam is not tucked inside and that it comes out as far as you can get it. So that seam is straight along the edge. The point turner can help you with that. You can also use the other end. So what you're going to do is you're going to put it inside and run that round edge along this side to help point that out. And you can work that little round part all the way along the edge. Once you get that entire edge turned over, you're going to have that little opening. So you're going to be able to take that seam allowance and press it inside. Once it's all pressed, we're going to have two pieces of fabric together with a nice finished edge, and we do have that little opening. From this area that you cut that three inch mark off, put a pin and mark another three inches. 
follow that edge all the way to this edge, you're going to be able to put a pin at six inches. When we fold these two together, you're going to have something on an angle. Let me turn it this way. With this edge on an angle, we're going to be able to sew it and make pockets. The higher pocket is going to fit taller things. The shorter pocket is going to fit our smaller tools. Now just take whatever tools you have and lay them down on this piece of fabric. Once we have them laid out so the smallest goes to the large, we're going to decide where and how we put the pockets in. So we're going to work on one side at a time. I'm going to put pins in in place of my stitching lines. The first pin is going to cover that together. From there, I can add in my tools and just pin in between. In this way, you know that you have enough room. Do your next one and add another pin. Just keep going along, pinning your pockets. Be sure to test and make sure that your tools are going to be able to come in and out. So the pair of scissors mark is not going to be as wide as the handle. It's going to be lower so it's tighter here so the pair of scissors aren't going to fall to the bottom. There are some things I'm going to be able to double up on. Now some things you're going to want in this roll and some things you're not going to. This is what's fun about this. You can personalize it to what you want. I've left some spaces that I know that I'm going to be able to add things as I go along. The next thing I've taken out, all the tools out and all the pins are going to be stitching lines and draw those stitching lines. I've kept my tools in order as I've taken them out just for simplicity. I won't need all of these pins so I'm going to be able to remove some. I just want to hold these four layers together. So let me turn that back around. I have all those lines drawn and I'm going to be able to stitch on them. Stitch on all the center ones but leave these two outside ones for after. Still with that straight stitch on the machine, we're going to stitch those lines down. We're going to start at the top and you're going to put the needle down and put the foot down. I'm going to stitch a little bit forward and then come back so you're coming right back off that fabric and then right back on. So you're making a back stitch and that's going to strengthen that top. And you can do that all in one motion as you're sewing. And then make sure your pins are out of the way. Follow that line. Come almost to the end. Back stitch and then go forward again. Bring the needle up to the highest position. Lift up the foot and that way the thread is not engaged. You can pull that thread out and snip right at the end and leave yourself some thread tails so you can start the next row. Now stitch all of these rows through the entire project, leaving both those ends open. With the pockets done, we need to close up the sides. We're going to put in a string so that we can tie it up. And we're going to do it to this opening that we've not closed off yet. You're going to need one yard of ribbon. Take that ribbon, fold it in half, so just slip the end of that ribbon right in there. Pin that ribbon down. We need to do one more row of stitching. Start at the bottom, then come forward, and you're going to be able to stitch this opening closed. Be sure to remove your pins and stitch all the way around. Then you're going to be able to come to the other side and stitch this other opening closed. So we're going to close off these end pockets. When you come to that end, you're going to be able to pivot just like you did inside. You want the needle down, lift up the foot, pivot the fabric, put the foot back down, and continue stitching. And you're going to continue this all the way around. When we come to the end, we're going to reverse that stitch and lock it. That ribbon is stitched right inside of that seam. And that last row of stitching made that last pocket for us on both sides. Now we can put the tools back in. My tools are all safely put away. I can close that up and just roll it. When I come to the end, I'm going to be able to take that ribbon, tie it up, and because that fold has been put over, the tools are not going to fall out. 
If you want to add in another case, you can still do that. Put your pouch in one of the areas, fold over, just continue wrapping that up. So by making this little roll up, we were able to cover a 5 8 seam allowance, a back stitch, a pivot. We trimmed some corners. We we're able to poke out those corners. And that last row we did all the way around the top is called a top stitch. So with a very basic straight stitch, we're able to accomplish a nice roll up for all of our tools. Thank you for joining me today on Simply Sewing. And I do hope to see you next time. Bye for now.